Good morning, everyone. Um, this is my first video that I made of the year. My name is Edward Lee, and I'm going to be your AP Calculus BC teacher this year. Uh, my wife currently is nine and a half months pregnant. She's going to be giving birth, and she wants me to take off at least three weeks with her. So when she has the baby, I'm going to be out. I do not know how long I will be out for, but three weeks as of right now. Um, and I may or may not make it to the first day of school. I'm planning on being here on Thursday and Friday. And then she's supposed to be induced later this weekend if she doesn't give birth by then. But we're going to see how that goes. So I'm hoping it's going to go well. Um, a little bit about myself. This is my 10th year of teaching. I've taught at Grand Terrace High School for nine years. This is my third year teaching BC Calculus. And um, I love it. I love it here. This is my job that I wanted to choose. I wanted to be here for students. And I love it absolutely. And this is what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I didn't become a teacher because I wanted a paycheck. I became a teacher because I wanted to talk with students, make jokes with students, and then teach them about math. It's a pretty sweet gig if I do say so myself. Um, right now I have a child, his name's Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Henry Lee. We had him on February 25th, um, a year and a half ago. He's a year and a half now. Um, well, I guess it's not a year and a half yet. He's almost a year and a half. Uh, he's getting pretty big. He's energetic. My day, uh, normally revolves around running around with him and, uh, two Australian shepherds. Um, and that's been fun. That's how I spent my entire summer, just watching him run around, jump on things, fall over. Uh, and it's been good. Uh, outside of that, I like to read quite a bit. This year I've read 25 books so far. Last year I read 68 books. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, I get kind of obsessed with things, and right now it's uh, reading and then playing with my kid. That's been uh, what I've been up to. Um, and so I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, I just wanted to go over the syllabus. I may not need this video, but I'm going to post it anyways. Um, for AP Calculus, one of the big things is, is we need to set up our time management. We got to get our management set up. And the only way to do that is to know what the expectations for the course are. The whole port point of this course right here is if you get a four or a five on the AP Calc test, you're going to get three classes. You're going to get Calc 1, Calc 2, and Calc 3 in college. If you get a 3 on it, you might get Calc 1 and Calc 2 if it's in a quarter system, or you just get the first half of Calc. You get an A, B, and then a B, C. Depends on if you're in a semester system or a quarter system. Um, and this is really big. All of my students that are hoping to become engineers or go into computer science or become a math major or an applied science major of any sort, you're going to need Calc 1, 2, and 3. And this is what you need to get going when you get to college. Especially for engineers, engineering is a five-year degree. No matter where you go, people say that it's a four-year degree. It's only a four-year degree if you got Calc 1, 2, and 3 down because you need Calc 1, 2, and 3 so that you could take your engineering courses. You can't take them without at least Calc 1 and 2. And so one of the big things about this course is for all my engineers, you need to be getting your stuff together. You need to get a 4 or 5 in this course to get a uh, all three of your courses, and then you have the prerequisites done for all of your engineering courses. Now, for many of you, if you're not going into an applied science, you're just going to need to get a three on this course. There's also something called an AB subscore as well. So the AB subscore is just on the AB topics. This, this BC class covers all the topics in AB, and then it also covers all the topics in BC. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your credit for college because all of your college courses are going to require um, Calc 1 or a math course for a general elective. And that's what you are trying to do in this. Um, so you can pass just the AB portion of it. You could pass the BC portion. And if you pass the BC portion with a 4 or 5, you're going to get three courses out of the way. When I started uh, college... I started with 48 units out of 180 units. I started with a full year of college done 
just by doing this. And what that allowed me to do is I was able to take other courses I wanted to take. Um, I was able to take uh, uh, P courses. I was able to take a couple of food courses where we made food and ate it and paired it with different drinks. Um, that was kind of fun. Um, and then I was able to take all of my uh, uh, prerequisites for the teaching credential program. So that actually set me up pretty nicely. And so what your goal in this course is to pass the test. And what's that going to entail? So um, first off, I'm just going to walk through the syllabus real quick. All assignments are going to be due the day after they are signed. I normally put it two days. It's due at 11.59. That gives you two days to do it. And I don't really want the work after that. I can take it. I'll accept it up until the test for half credit. And why is this important? Our district mandates 10% goes to final, 60% goes to assessments, and 30% goes to participation and coursework. And so one of the big things people don't know is you need to do all the assignments. Okay? And if you do all these assignments, you should do okay on the assessments. This assessment, I'm going to break up in two categories, quizzes and unit tests. These quizzes are going to count for 25% of your grade, and the unit tests are going to count for 35%. I do not allow retakes on the quizzes, but what I do do is I allow you guys to replace your quiz scores with, with, your, um, with your test scores. So whatever your test score gives you, you're going to be able to go through and that's going to replace whatever your quiz was. So say you got a 0 out of 10 on a quiz, but you got an 85 out of 100 on your test. This 0 out of 10 is going to become an 8.5 out of 10. And I'm going to go back and replace those after the test. As for retakes, I allow retakes for your unit tests. You have to do them within two weeks uh, before the next unit test generally. And what's going to end up happening is I will replace whatever that unit test score is and those quiz scores, but the test will be different. And I do expect you guys to come to tutoring at least one day or until you know the content beforehand. I'm not just going to give it to you because you showed up. I need you to do test corrections. I need you to come into class. I need you to try to learn it. And then we need to reteach it sometimes. And then you're able to retake the test. Um, as for that, that's pretty much it. Um, one of the things I'd like to ask with me being out for three weeks um, is I, I'm not a big fan of cheating. Um, please show integrity in all the work that you do. Ultimately, the choices that you make now are going to make you the person that you are going to be in the future. Um, please try your best. I want to see your work. I don't want to see other people's work. And one of the big things I want to tell you is there are answer keys to a lot of the things available. Um, and I want you guys to know that you need to, you need to do all of the work before you look at the key. In college, my last math class, I stared at the answer key. I didn't try in class. And when you get to college, you have two tests, maybe two midterms, and then you have another uh, final. Um, and that's it. They don't grade homework. They don't grade anything. Uh, I got a zero on the first test. It's 50% of my grade. And uh, I stared at that answer key. I had no idea what to do. I got to the test, and I had not done one problem on my own. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. I just stared at an answer key. And I hope you guys don't have that same experience. You should not look at an answer key until you've already finished the work or you've attempted it at least. You should attempt it all, then you can look at keys to try to figure out what's going on, but do not look at them beforehand because that's gonna hurt you in the long run. As for that class, I studied, I did all the work I needed to, I got 100 on the final. The teacher gave me a B in the class, so I should've got an F in the class. So I was pretty happy about that. All right, outside of that, what's gonna happen is you need to have a your parent and yourself, you have to go and fill out the syllabus recognition form. It's gonna be on there. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna fill out an index card. This is gonna be for me to know and get to know you. Um, what you're trying to do is encapsulate who you are within a five by seven index card. On one side, on the blank side, you're gonna put a self image, you're gonna draw yourself. 
or something that represents you, you're going to put your name or nickname on the top of that card. Afterwards, you're going to answer these following questions on it, and then you're going to turn that in. I'd like you guys to use colored pencils there in the back of the classroom. Please feel free to sharpen them in the sharpener, um, and then please put them away when you're done. After that, what's going to happen is I wanted to show you the agenda or the uh, goal sheet I'm going to have for you. Um, this is the next kind of bit. I want you to go through and look up the college that you want to go to, and I want you to look up the AP credit that's associated with that class. So the first thing is you're going to go through, and this is about goals. It's about goals and what you need to do to be successful in this course. The first thing I want you to do is write as much about yourself as you want. I'm going to go through and read this. It's going to let me know a little bit about you. <coughs> you're going to give me your name, your nickname. You're going to talk about who you are, what your interests are, what your hobbies are. You can be as quick with this, but I'd like to see a little bit about you. After that, I want you to write, what are your plans after high school? What do you plan on doing? Do you plan on attending a university? If so, for what? If you plan on joining the military? If so, for, for what purpose? What do you want to do in the military? If you want to go into a trade, let me know. If you're going to work at a family business, let me know what that is and why, what you want to do with that. And then the third part's for the greater majority of you who are planning on attending university. If you ever plan on attending university, this is what this is going to save you. At least if it's within the next 10 years, this is what's going to be happening. If you're planning on attending college, please do a Google search and look up how much one quarter or semester costs to attend the university you plan on going to. So you go and look up the university, you look up the cost of that university for one semester quarter, and then you figure out how much that is per year. If it's a semester, you multiply it by two. If it's a quarter, you multiply it by three. Um, and then you look up the total cost for your degree. This is going to take four or five years. So you're going to multiply it by four or five, depending on what that is. And that's how much your degree is going to cost you. The rest of it, you're going to look up the cost of room, board, and food and write that down, find the cost per year. And then you're going to find the total cost for your room, board, and food, and then add them together. And that's going to give you your total cost for your degree. After that, once again, if you get a four or five on the AP te uh, BC test, uh, it will clear full three full classes in a quarter system or two full classes in a semester system. This is going to save you roughly a quarter of your life, a quarter of your life, a quarter of you paying for school. Um, let me know how much money that's going to save you. Um, and then what I want you guys to do is you're going to click on the link and you're going to go, oh, it's opening in Safari. Um, and what's going to happen is you're going to go through and you're going to click on the AP credit policy. You're going to go find your college. And so I'm going to go type in UC Riverside. Okay. UCR. Show keyboard. Uh, Riverside. No. Come on. There we go. Go. And what you're going to do is you're going to go look at the AP calculus credit that it gives you. So if you get a three on this test, if you get a three, it's going to give you uh, calc one. So this looks like it's going to be, uh, it's going to give you calc one. So I'm assuming there's semester system now. If you get a three on the BC test, it looks like it's going to give you uh, calc one. No, it's just a quarter. It's going to give you calc one and calc two. If you get a four or higher, it's going to give you calc one, two, and three. So if you get a three on the AB subscore, you're just going to get one course. If you get a three on the BC, you're going to get two courses. If you get a four or higher, you're going to get three math courses out of the way. You're going to get Calc 1, 2, and 3, A, B, and C credit. Um, okay, and I want you to do that for your university, and then you're going to go answer the rest of those questions to the best of your ability. All right, and then the last thing is I'm going to be posting a daily agenda of what you're supposed to do. So this is for Thursday, Friday, so on and so forth. I'm sorry, I may or may not be here. Um, I hope that you guys all do well. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I will try to get back to you as fast as can. Cheers.